My name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you go through all the problems. If there is a problem that gives you trouble, you will find the solutions to the problem from day number 251 through 400. We have finished almost, we are almost all done with doing all the problems from this book. The problems that appear in this book, they all happen to be, almost all of them happen to be the exact same problem and in most cases on exact same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. If you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Day number 1 through 250. Original problems tend to be lengthier and they tend to be a little bit more in depth. Right now, we are solving problems out of this book here, quantitative comparison questions, quantitative comparison questions out of the 10th edition of the general GRE, because the other two books that I just showed you, the revised GRE, the first and the second edition, simply do not contain enough quantity to comparison questions so to get some extra practice we started solving some problem from here from day number 401 right now we are on page number 227 let's turn to it page number 227 problem number 9 the penultimate problem on the page the second to the last problem on the page the penultimate problem on the page the second to the last problem on the page, number 9. 57% of people who took the exam had no trouble with it. The other three, uh, three fifth, or rather two fifths of the people, about 40% missed it. Here is what we are told. We are told that we have N that lies between 750 and 1500. And we are being asked to compare, we are being asked to compare in column A, 1500 minus N, and in column B, N minus 750. Now listen carefully, okay, what we have to do here? The reason why almost 40% of the people, 43% of the people missed the question is because when you're plugging in numbers here, that's what you have to do here, plug in some numbers and see what happens. The reason why 43% of the people missed this is because a lot of the times I've seen people when they're plugging in numbers, they become too diffident, they become too timid, they become too... Diffident, too timid. They, 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 they don't want to tear, they don't want to go all the way to the outermost limits. That's what you have to do. You have to cover all the possibilities. You have to cover all the bases. And the way you cover all the possibilities is exactly by doing what it says. To go all the way to outermost limits. Don't just stay somewhere in the middle. Don't just plug in, don't just plug in 1000 here and solve the problem and that's it. That's what most people end up doing. The people who are getting it wrong, that's what they're doing. Let's, 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 let's be a little bit let's, let's be a little bit gutsy, shall we? Let's plug in. Let's plug in. Let let's plug in. Let n equal to v. We, we we are told that n is from 750 to to 1500. Let's plug in 751, shall we? To the outermost edge. If we plug in n equal to 751, here we will get 1500. Here we will get 1500 minus 751. 1500 minus 750 is 750, so this is going to be 749, and here we will get 751, 751 minus 750, we get 1. Of course, answer in this scenario is A. Now we have to try the other extreme. Answer to this scenario is A. Now let's try the other extreme. Let N be, let N be, what do you suppose the N should be this time? All the way to the other, other extreme. 1499. 1499 and you can immediately see what's going to happen. You can immediately see what's going to happen. 1500 minus N, 1500 minus 1499 is going to be 1 and 1499 minus 750 is going to be 749. The, the situation has reversed. The 749 appears here, the 1 appears here. Now the answer is B. Before the answer was A, now the answer is B. It's the mirror image of each other and therefore the answer is D. The answer is D. We can't really tell which quantity is going to be bigger, 1500 minus N or N minus 750. It depends on which 
which end of the spectrum you are at. Do you understand? The answer is B. Let's move on then. The next question. Let's take care of these two words here, otherwise we will forget about them and then I'll end up erasing them. Diffident. What does it mean to be diffident? Diffident I always find an interesting word because it's such a simple word. It's the antonym of confident. If one is not confident, one is being diffident. D-I-F-F, -F, let's see if I spell it correctly. D-I-F-F-I-D-E-N-T, -F -F -E diffident. We learned this word, diffident, on day number 14. Day 40. Just type in GRE vocabulary words. GRE vocabulary words. Day 40. Look for the video and learn the word. Do you understand? And when you're plugging in numbers in situations like this, don't be diffident. Be gutsy. Do you understand? Go to the extreme. Live, live to the, uh, take, take chances. Go to the outer edge. Do you understand? Live on the edge is what I meant to say. That's the expression I think. Living on the edge. Penultimate is a very simple word. We have done one, we have done this thing at least a dozen times. It just means second to the last. The problem that we just dealt with was the penultimate question on the page. Penultimate is something we learned on day number 27, I believe, if I'm correct. Day number 11. Again, just type in GRE vocabulary words, day 11, and learn the word. Question number 10. Number 10 was 56%. Number 10 was 56 percent. It's a geometry question. We are told that P, Q, R, S is a is a parallelogram. Is a parallelogram. Looks like this. This this angle we are told is x minus 5, and this one we are told is y plus 10. And what we're being asked to compare is x versus y. x versus y. Well, let's find out, shall we? Can't be that bad, can it? Well, there are two ways we can go about it. We can either plug in numbers and do it that way, plug in, by plugging in numbers for x and y, or we can do it algebraically. Either way will do the job. Do you understand? Algebraic way is more of a traditional way, orthodox way, more of a classical way, conventional way, uh, geeky way, nerdy way, if you like, more of an academic way, algebraic way, obviously. Or we can plug in numbers. Let's plug in numbers. So it will be easier. Make up some number. What we have to understand is that it's a parallelogram. It is a parallelogram. We are told that, which means this angle, y plus y plus 10, has to be same as x plus y in a parallelogram. In a parallelogram, of course, this angle equals that angle, and this angle has to equal that angle. That's what parallelogram is. So whatever that angle is, has to equal that angle. Let's plug in some number for that value. I'm going to plug in 100 for x. Why 100? To which our answer would be, why the hell not? Plug in 100 for x, which means this angle that we're looking at, which means this angle that we're looking at is 95 degrees. Because it says the angle is x minus 5. If that angle is 95 degrees, this angle must also be 95 degrees. And that angle we are told is y plus 10. y plus 10 has to equal 95, which means y has to be 85. Which means y has to be 85. That's it, we're done. We plugged in 90... Something has gone wrong. Oh, we plugged in, sorry, we did not plug in... You see, this is, where, this is where the bonus part comes in. These questions are called quantitative comparison. We just have to compare it. I was about to say that x is 95 and y is 85. Now, had I said, had I said, had I said that x is 95 and y is 85, we still would have gotten the right answer. We're just comparing the two quantities. We simply have to realize that x has to be more than y. By how much, it really doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt us. But in reality, of course, we know that it is 100. X is one, we plugged in 100 for x. The reason we plug in 100 for x. The reason I got confused is because I have a habit of circling the values that I plug in. I should not have circled that 95. That's what confused me. I should not have circled that 95. That, that's what that is. That angle is 95 degrees because it's 100 minus 5. x is 100. 100 versus 85. The answer is b. Another way we could have done the same problem is through algebra, which is not actually that bad at all. It's very simple algebra, very straightforward. We have to realize that this angle, x minus 5, has to equal this angle, y plus 10. y plus 10. And we are being asked to compare x versus y. So let's bring the x by itself. Let's add 5 to both sides. Let's add 5 to both sides so that we can have x by itself. x by itself equals 
y plus 10 plus 5 is 15. Now what does this tell us? How do we read this thing? This, this is sentence. This is sentence. The equivalent term for mathematics, just like we just like in, in, in a language we have sentences in mathematics, in algebra we have equations. Algebra is an algebra is a language. And the sentence in the language of algebra is called an equation. This is a sentence. Let's translate this sentence from the language of algebra to English language, shall we? What this says is that it says that x is equal sign means is x is 15 more 15 more means plus sign x is 15 more than y that's what he says he said x is 15 more than y x x is 15 more than y whatever the y is whatever the y is you have to add 15 to it you have to add 15 to it to get x that's exactly what we found here x is 15 more than y you see no matter what you plug in for x, you will always find that y will turn out to be 15 less than this number. The answer is, answer is b. Oh, so, answer is not b. What the hell? 100 versus 85, the answer is a. Oh, it's a good thing I caught myself because I was about to close the video. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.